All right, so after that break, we, we're going to go back right on into the games here. On the blue side, on left, we have CEL. And on the right side, on red, we have Slap Choppuccino. After countless requests to get their full name added into the uh, screen. The abbreviation is still Slap. So, can't, can't do a whole lot there. Anyway, getting into the biggest bands here right now, we do have an Ivern. Ban go right away for CEL again. Ivern, very much in meta, pretty overloaded champion in my opinion. Has barriers, has shields, also has the CC to follow up, and a really, really good pet actually in the form of Daisy. Already getting taken away as well. Actually, Crying Pan, pretty, pretty good on the champion. There is going to be a LeBlanc ban away as well, so not allowing crying pan uh, option on that one and uh, actually a Caitlyn band coming out from the side of Slap Chappuccino that one's a different one coming out for them as Trick Shots has played that I believe two games in a row so uh, he's been pretty good on the champ Now just waiting on our first picks and bans. Again, CEL looking for their first win here on the round robin. Currently zero and two. Looking to try and tie up with Slap Chappuccino, but I believe they would win the tiebreaker because they win the game. So this one's actually pretty important for both teams. As Mundo gonna go ahead and get locked in there for the top lane. Slayer on the champion. It could possibly be a support Mundo or jungle, so uh, I won't judge right away. <laughs> Graves, though, gets locked in, and actually Callista hover coming out here, so that would explain the Caitlyn ban there, trying to keep the counter at bay. Callista still being hovered here. And great team fight champion, great for those long, long fights coming out in with the Ren stacks, so we'll see if that gets locked in immediately. can hear the team comps right now <laughs> and that's actually just going to be a Morgana hover now likely to be locked in was played the last two times by Bazook Suzuka so would not be a surprise that one gets locked in actually the Velka is going to come on in at the last second there so we're going to see if that gets flexed down into the bot lane on support Nala is going to get locked in there for CEL believe it was played in the jungle in their last game so maybe trying to change up the pace there try and see if they could actually do a whole lot more to the champion they weren't able to really capitalize with it or uh, really gank early so it didn't have much of an impact brand though gonna come on in that's a big source of AP magic damage and the Zaya hover is there it's gonna get locked in Rakan also on the table here for Peanut if he wants to go with it. Again, the duo lane of duos right now. Pretty much half of Rakan's power at the moment is in his kit because of Zaya. Uh, and it's going to get ahead and locked in. So we're going to see the bird bot lane of Zaya and Rakan. Going to be interested to see what kind of follow up we have for their uh, possible mid laner. Again, it could be a mid lane Balkaz, but Ash is going to get locked in as well as that Thresh to round out the team comp here of CEL. Now, looking to see if this is going to be either a uh, top lane pick or the uh, middle. Actually, it will be a top lane because Valkaz was locked in. Unless it's uh, some weird Rakan top that I've never heard of. But likely not. Peanut's still hovering here right now. Trying to sort out what he wants to play. 15 seconds on the clock here for Peanut to make the decision for the team. Looks like some miscommunication coming out there. Seven seconds on the, the pick here. Still waiting for this one to get locked in. It looks like he will be locking in the Tom Gench. So, 
I'm interested to see how well this goes. Uh, it could possibly be a top lane. I, actually, I don't know the positions right now because they've swapped around a little, so uh, Metal might be up in that top lane with the Velkaz. I highly doubt it. Uh, Pan might come on up into that top lane to go one-on-one -on -one with that Mundo. I'll be frank, I have no idea what their comp is. <laughs> That's Peanut on that Rakan. <laughs> Holding on to his summoner spells at the moment. <laughs> so 10 seconds on the counter right now as we're going to go ahead and get into that spectator delay. Then I can finally go over our champion, our... Uh, <clears throat> Our summoner spells, there we go, we're locked into it. And at the very last second, we do have our Rakan changing over. So up in the top lane, it will be likely that Tom Gench of Crying Pan is running the Flash Teleport. Meanwhile, Valkaz in that mid lane with the Flash Ignite, so we'll be going quite aggressive. Mundo up in the top lane, pretty substantial. Actually, the entire team of CEL are in their champion positions. So nothing out of the ordinary there as far as positioning goes. A pretty tanky comp actually coming out with Mundo and Nautilus, so uh, might be seeing an early Grievous Wounds item either coming out for that Velkaz or even possibly Zaya if she really needs it. Graves in the jungle will allow for a lot of AD coming out. It's going to be kind of up to Velkaz at the moment to see how much AP magic damage he can output for his team because he's a big contributor of whether or not this team comp will work in the end. As we're seeing, we got about a minute 30 left on that spectator delay before we actually get into the games. Two. We're going to go ahead and load into our game quite shortly here on the spectator delay, and we'll be going into the match between CEL and Slap Chappuccino. So we're going to go ahead and get into our match here between CEL and Slap Chappuccino. Slap Chappuccino up on that red side. 
I'm going to go ahead and fix our scoreboard just a little bit there. Tom Genge up in that top lane. He's picking up big top. He's going to go ahead and find Bran there. Gets a little nice, right? Gets the tail whip out. Ward is going to go ahead and get down there, so maybe trying to spot out any late possible invades. Crying Pant is spotted up in that top lane, though, by Mundo. Do you want to smell it? Again, Ash going to go ahead and land. A little bit of harass there. Not a whole lot, though. Dancing his way to victory, as he would on that recon. Not a whole lot of interesting itemization coming out here right now. Again, the recon going to go ahead and go down that ancient coin line. Again, support items were reworked in this last patch. So we're going to go ahead and see exactly how well this ends up for him. It looks like both jungler is going to go ahead and start on the boss side jungle. So Overlord going to go ahead on to that blue buff there. Not starting Raptors. We've seen a lot of Graves recently starting the Raptor camp. Try and get that early level 2 and then pressure in, especially with, say, a Vel'Koz that uh, could have started W there uh, to help with the clear. But uh, favored not to. Would lose a little bit of lane presence and trick shots and Peanut in this bot lane on the Rakan Zaya duo. So it's interesting how well they go. Getting some nice hits into there. Again, haven't seen a whole lot of Zaya recently, or in general at the moment. She's been kind of a niche champion for a lot of play players. Just because of her new DS, people just getting used to the kit, of course, uh, as uh, Metal does hit that level 2 in the mid lane. So, going to apply some pressure. A lot of damage coming out there. Going to get the Flash Ignite. It's going to be a first blood onto that Valkaz. And while in the bot lane, Trick Shots and Peanut going a very aggressive. The rip, not just there. It will go over to Trick Shots in the end. So now two kills on the side of Slap Choppuccino. Up in that top lane right now, Crying Pan does have the stacks on that Mundo if he really wants to go ahead and eat him up. But again, great little start here coming out for both the mid lane as well as the bot lane here for Slap Choppuccino. Pushing that into their tower, so we're going to have a little bit of a level advantage before Ash gets back there. Going to lose a couple of minions to that tower. Metal keeping up the pressure in this mid lane is able to land the Velkaz Q and that W coming through for him big time. Hook is going to go on to Peanut right now. Got to be a little bit careful. Going to run straight back to uh, Trick Shots. They're going pretty aggressive here in that bot lane, but it might not be enough as this is an Ash that's only level one right now. The pop up comes on up. Peanut going to pick up the kill. Trick Shots on this Aya right now, trying to whittle down the last of this Thresh's health. No rip is going to come on through. He's going to flash up to the top side of the turret, picks up the kill. Middle almost able to pick that one up as well. So now Trick Shots 3 0 and 0 on the Zaya. People mentioned during the break that he was his uh, currently his favorite champion of the game and uh, got some flack for that one. Uh, he's doing quite well here as we're going to see the combined recall of Rakan and Zaya as they're going to go ahead and go straight on back to the base. Unique little interaction right there. And already Slapchop and Chino going up almost Two and a half K gold right now at four minutes. That's actually a pretty big lead coming out out. A BF sword actually finished for the Zaya of Trick Shots. Um, so looking to really put on the pressure here if he needs to. Uh, and that is just not going to be tradable if you're the Ash of Aaron right now. Going to have to look for these fights, look for a little bit of this jungle help. But that was something we saw in CEL's game earlier that they really didn't have any coming out for him. Is Crying Pan going to go ahead and eat up that briefcase, actually denying a cannon menu. Very nicely done by him. Again, Tom Gench, one of those carries, or uh, uh, tanks up in top lane that can take a little bit of harass and doesn't really mind a bit because he's going to regen about half of it back. Trick Shots right now just has frozen the lane too. This is not what you want. Meanwhile, Overlord is going to find this Nautilus in the jungle. Looking to go actually kind of aggressive here right now. Looks like he should be safe with the help of the Blasting Cone. We'll get him over that wall into the blue side blue buff. 
out in this bot lane. Peanut and Trick Shots really kind of just looking to go aggressive whenever they can. At this point, they have such a big lead that any kind of trade will work out good for them. Prime Pan does have that TP in case things do get a little hairy. Again, Peanut going to go straight on in, and immediately a flash is burned by the Ash right now. Trick Shots ripping the feathers back onto that Thresh. They are going to land that hook, though, decide not to maybe go in. Exhaust is burned immediately on to this Ash and Zaya at the moment. No one going to come on through. Meanwhile, Nala's going to get caught out here by the Valkaz. Alt does come on through, and they're going to pick up yet another kill in that mid lane now. Zero and five. Clean it up at the moment with them. Valkaz taking a little bit of damage here. And it's only a level four brand. It's not doing a whole lot of damage. Hasn't scaled, again, any more points. Only one more point into that W, so it's not going to really burst down the carry, as you would hope. 4K gold lead now for the side of Slap Chapachino. Getting all up in this top lane. It's Crying Pan first. Mundo, as he's going to actually eat up the Mundo up in top. Trade is still going on. Mundo does pop the ultimate right now, but he is keeping up this pressure. He, he stuns up the Mundo. He can easily eat him down. And in the end, it's going to be a kill going over to Crying Pan. Actually, flashes comes out. Trick Shots picks up the kill, and that's going to be a kill going up top lane for Crying Pan on that Tom Gench. Now a 5K gold lead. Shots now four kills ahead, almost 30 CS up on this Ash. This is not a good start for them. At this moment, Trick Shots that might be just looking. Actually, this combo that comes out between the two rips it back, going to pick up the kill onto the Ash. Now 5 0 and 0 on the Zaya is going to have a lot of trouble trying to get back into this. As Brand taking a decent chunk of damage from the combo there of Velkaz is forced to back. He does almost have this flash ignite available to him if he wanted to. Gonna go ahead and get back. So Overlord gonna go ahead and take his blue buff. And I haven't really seen a whole lot of the graves. He doesn't really need to show himself because again his solo lanes and dual lane have just been going off. Again, Essence Reaver. Finished at seven and a half minutes here for Zaya. He's going to be outputting an immense amount of damage. Again, Zaya's kit does scale actually very nicely with that crit chance. Some extra damage comes in through the feather rip. I'm not exactly sure the exact name of it. That's actually in the jungle right now. Nautilus has to pop the uh, has to pop the shield, almost going down there to the Raptors. Again, the chickens can be quite fearsome. You have to be a little bit careful. This is level six though of the bot lane. Very old oh, that damage that comes out on to this Ash. Again, gets half health by a simple feather rip combo from Zaya. And trying to go a little aggressive here. Might bite off more than he can chew as he gets ulted down. Meanwhile, Tom Gench is here for the party in bot lane. Ash going underneath the tower is not going to matter as Trick Shots picks up the first kill. Again, has tower aggro. He might go down here in the end. He does not have it. He is going to actually Feather Storm to avoid the final turret shot. Very nicely done. Didn't even have to use that during the dive. And that's the first turret going over for Slap Chappuccino. Now a very big, demanding 8k gold lead here at 9 minutes. Just kind of outclassing CEL in every lane at the moment. Meanwhile, this mid turret taking some damage from Metal. Brand just is going to get there in time to answer back, but you can see Overlord right now on that red buff, stealing it away from the Nautilus. Nautilus suffering greatly right now in farm and in levels. This is a big one for him as uh, Overlords might be looking to make a play here in mid if given the opportunity. Here comes Rakan though with the support in the mid and actually Graves is going to find that brand right now in the mid lane. He has to back off his tower and actually the bot lane of Slap Chappuccino have actually made their way to try and take this tower. Now Zaya, a lot of gold on this champion, sitting at almost 5k total compared to the 2,000 of Ash. A 3k gold lead is pretty much a full free item at this point. Slayer just clearing it out, but he's going to be met with trick shots on this Zaya right now. Go ahead and rip those feathers back, looking to clear the waves. 
Genzai has a nice built-in wave clear as well. We'll give some of the farm over back to Crying Pan. Because they might be looking at possibly a dive right now. Again, Featherstorm isn't up for a couple seconds. They're actually just kind of burning down the tower at this point. Again, a little bit of attack speed picked up on that Zaya. Meanwhile, down in that bot lane, Rakan, not a good spot right now. No Ash ultimate is burned. The dive is not going well for them. Meanwhile, Overlord's going to pick up and find a Nautilus right now. Going over to Ward. This is actually going to force to be ulted. Meanwhile, in that mid lane, again, Velcon's not able to pick up the kill, but the rest of... Slapchop Gino rotate back. Meanwhile, in this bot lane, Peanut is just kind of running damage control here as they're going to likely take that top lane turret. And Exhaust just goes out right now. The flash comes out from Thresh. He's going to get executed to the tower. And unfortunately, this bot lane dive has just not gone their way. Trick shots and them pushing in on that top side turret. Little known fact, if you actually remake a game at this point, Slap Chavachino would actually just automatically get the win in LCS, being up 10, actually 11k almost in gold at 11 minutes. I think the rule is if you have a 40% 40, 40 gold lead, uh, you uh, can automatically win that one. Meanwhile, up in that top lane, Trick Shots just, again, nailing down that turret. Nautilus is here to support, does not have an ultimate. Brand is going to land. Featherstorm comes on out. They're not going to go ahead and rip it down, but Overlord Puffles is going to finish off the kill with the ultimate right now. Trying to rip it through. He is going to pick up the kill. Slay, though, might go down here as it's going to be a double kill coming out for the Zaya. Again, so far ahead at this point. It's a triple kill in top. It's a kill down a bot lane. Score is 0 to 17. This is looking pretty dire on the side of CEL. Might be going winless here on the weekend in the round robin. Trick shots just keeping up that pressure in top. He's doing what he needs to do. At this point, 9 0 and 3, sitting on 2,400 gold. It's a little bit uh, tough to get back into the game when your enemy laner is 5,000 gold ahead of you at 12 minutes. So um, you could blame that one on lag if you wanted. No lag on land. It's possible. Ah, uh, crying fan right now. Training back here with this stretch. Maybe bought a uh, bit off more than he can troop. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, though, this Velka is so far ahead. Look how little damage they are doing to the Tom Genji. He is slowly getting burned down. Pops the shield just there, but they're chasing this guy all the way down. Flash comes on through. Aaron picks up his first kill of the game. CL getting one back, but having a little bit of trouble at the moment. 13 minutes on the clock at this point. Slap Chavachino could have went for the Rift Herald and used it to really pressure up because there's no CC on the side, really, of the enemy team of CEL. And it looks like the game actually might be finished at this point. We are going to go ahead and still spectate through the rest of the game here. Overwillow Crumbles actually gets hooked up there. Nice little combo comes out. Ken Rakan, though, in that middle of the fight. Here comes the TV, though, coming out from Tom Gensh. They just get destroyed in the end. Trick Shot's taking a lot of turret damage. Turret does get taken down there by Overlord Puffles. Now pushing on here. Looking to possibly end the game here. It's a 15,000 gold lead. Might be a little tough to get back into this one if you're on the side of CEL. And Hip Tower looking like he'll be going down here quite shortly. Score 2 to 20. Still six minutes before the enemy team could surrender if they wanted to. Slapchop just going ahead. They're pinging out that Rift Herald. If they really want to try and end the games here, they can. As we can see, Crying Pan is going to deliver that Zaya straight up top. Burning down this Rift Herald quite easily. Very nicely done. Shields coming out from the Rakan. Can have those feathers if she wants to rip it back through the Rift Herald. That's going to come out, and that's going to be secured over to the side here. Trick Shots is actually going to go ahead and pick it on up. Powered Recall does come out. It's going to take both of them back. A little bit of a unique interaction. If one of them has Baron, they can actually use it to get back to base quite fast. Again, 220 on the score at the moment. Keeping up the pressure 15 minutes in. As Nautilus gets knocked up and ignited as well as ulted down in the end. They get the hook onto it, but here comes the big amount of damage from the side of Overlord. He's actually going to pick up the kill with that. It's going to be a triple kill coming out here 
for Valkaz. But in the end, actually looking to maybe pick up a Quadra. It's not going to happen with this Rift Herald buff. They can really look at finishing the game off if they wanted to with these minions here. Super minion on the lead. Trick Shot's going to pop that Rift Herald buff right now into the base at 15 minutes. This is the secret with Rift Herald. If you're up this high in gold at the moment, you can really just end the game at any point that you want as she's going to go ahead, ram straight onto that turret and destroy it in one hit. Blue turret does go down there. They are pushing on to the rest of this base at the moment, looking to possibly end it off. Rift Herald will be going down here. Redemption is popped. But Graves is hooked in. Nina, though, gets the double knockup right now. And Zaya from the side is just outputting way too much damage at this point. Quickness does come out now, but it might be enough for Slap Tapachino to finish off this game as they will in very demanding fashion at 16 minutes up. Double gold. It's 3 total 28, and CEL gets taken down. And with that, we're going to go ahead and go back to a quick break. Once we sort out the teams, we'll get them loaded back onto the Rift quite shortly.